Okay, um, let's get started. I'll request uh, Pastor Mubanga to come and open for us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. We thank you this morning, our Lord and our God. We thank you, our Savior, for this wonderful day that you can bring us in your presence to come and worship you, to come and praise you, to come and lift up your name. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, you kept us safe in the night. And this morning, Lord, we are able to see this brand new day. We thank you for this opportunity that, Lord, we can come in your presence with confidence because of the shed blood at Calvary. We thank you, Father, this morning as we worship, Lord, we pray that you glorify yourself. We pray, Father, that you touch each and every one of us. Every piece of this program, Lord, is put in your hands. We pray for the choir. We pray for the moderator. We pray, Father, for the preacher. We pray for everyone, oh Lord, who is here this morning, that, Lord, you meet all of us at our point of need. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Let us now welcome Mrs. Charlie to come and read the psalm. Our psalm this morning is taken from Psalm 24, the whole of Psalm 24. And it reads, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your hands, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Amen. All right, so let's put our hands together and we will come the choir.
singing indeed. I want to call upon the man of God uh, to preach the word of God this morning, uh, Mr. Mukawa. Good morning, everybody. Just turn to your neighbor and encourage them that they are looking good. Turn to the other neighbor and encourage them that they are looking good. And you can go further by saying, telling them that I love you with the love of God. Amen. So I know singles that are neighbor to uh, another single, they are emphasizing the love. I love you, and they live there with the love of God. Amen. We continue to, uh, our subject is understanding the salvation through the, the book of Galatians, so we continue. Uh, but my theme today is uh, a walk bearing God's nature. A walk bearing God's nature. And the title of my message is A Distinguished Christian Believer. Amen. A Distinguished Christian Believer. And uh, we are, the word of God is coming from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 26. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 26. But because I want uh, us to understand or to have the, the context, we, I'll start from uh, verse 16. Amen. So the Bible from uh, verse 16, Galatians 5, the Bible says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are, not, you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and butchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, discord jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I, I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to uh, Jesus, Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with the passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Amen. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We know, Father, that your word is anointed. And when your word comes, Lord, it comes to perform and transform us. We pray and surrender, Lord, to you, that, Lord, you help me to uh, speak your word uh, so that it may be an encouragement, an exhortation, uh, something that will be able to change our, our, our course. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. We honor you, Holy Spirit. Glorify yourself in the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we continue to look at uh, Galatians. So from the speakers that have gone before me, uh, we established that the book of Galatians was written uh, by Paul. Uh, it was written to the churches in Galatia. Then the letter was written to the believers just like us. It was not written to pagans, but it was written to the believers just like us. So the letter was mainly written to uh, expose the wrong teachings uh, that was being taught by Judaizer Christians who brought in another word that salvation is, 
is by faith, not only by faith, but also by uh, following uh, the, 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 the rituals of, of Judaism. So now Paul uh, comes to uh, dispel this message uh, by, by saying that salvation is by faith alone. And then he brings uh, to, to, to the Galatians to encourage them to live the liberty that the Lord that has been brought by our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he continues to, to encourage them that we are not justified by our, our works, but we are justified by our faith. So we, 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 we continued in chapter, uh, chapter 5 there, we, we observed, I think this was preached by Dr. Zimbabwea, he, he, he summarizes the, the, uh, the commandment into, into just two parts, that love God and love, uh, uh, love each other, love your neighbor. Uh, you know, this is more like the math mathematicians, it is more like simplifying, eh? So the commandment had so many things, but, and then they ask you to simplify this equation or simplify uh, this expression, and he will simplify it and bring it to just the two things, love God and love your neighbor. It's so easy to remember that, amen? It's so easy, so he simplifies that. But in chapter five and six, we see him transitioning to application. He begins to tell the Galatians to apply the gospel in their lives. He begins to encourage them to be practical, to live what the gospel, uh, the gospel of uh, the gospel tells us to 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 to, to live. So we see him now. From chapter verse 16, we, we read, he begins, he tells the, the, the Galatian believers that, you know, there is always a conflict between uh, the flesh and the spirit. There is always a, a conflict. So once you get born again, there will always be a conflict between the flesh and the spirit that comes to dwell in you. You know, our nature once, when Adam sinned, our nature became sinful. You know, we, were, we, were, we are always inclined to doing evil. You know? So when the Spirit comes in us now, there is this conflict because the, the, the sinful nature is pulling us to, to do what it desires to do, but the Spirit also uh, is telling us to do what it desires, the Spirit, us as believers, uh, to do. So one thing that uh, we must understand is that sin, the flesh is uh, a sinful nature. So when we are talking about the flesh, we are not talking about this flesh as the, uh, the body, just the body as the flesh, but we are talking about the nature, the sinful nature that dwells in us. So this sinful nature in us always wants to do bad things. It always wants to do evil things. You know, there is no good in the sinful nature. There is no good in the sinful nature. It always draws us, wants to push us to do the, the acts of the flesh. And we saw the acts of the flesh being listed as we read uh, the word of God. And I want, to, I want you to know that this sinful nature in you will continue to be with you. I mean, I mean, this conflict of the sinful nature and the spirit will continue to be with you. It will always be with you. No matter how much you rise up as, uh, in, the, in, in the things of God, you rise up, you become even a bishop. The, sinif, the, the, the conflict of the sinful nature and the spirit will always be there with you. So you are not like uh, immune uh, from this conflict. That once I grow in the things of God, then I'll, I'll stop experiencing this, sin of, uh, this conflict. So the conflict will always be with us until we transition to be with the Lord. That's when the conflict will end. 
So I came to encourage you that that conflict that you experience as a Christian, it is normal because you are still here. You will still experience it. There will always be that conflict. But how, what we become as believers, what we become as Christians depends on the decisions that we make. The decisions that we make will determine how you will become as a believer. You are free to make decisions. The Spirit will not force you to make decisions. But you as an individual, you as a believer, you, you have to make a decision. You have to decide that me, I will go this direction. So you will not be forced. That's why the Bible tells us that you are grieved the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will not tell you. It will whisper to you, stop this. Don't go this direction. Don't go there. But the decision depends on you whether to obey. That's why we find believers sinning. Because they, have, they make decisions. It's not like the Holy Spirit doesn't tell them. But he tells them, but they make decisions. They decide to do what they decide to do. So when you decide to follow the flesh, you will do what the flesh desires. And we read there what the flesh, the acts of the flesh are. You know, sexual immorality, drunkardness. You know, these are so common to us, as, especially as, as, as uh, students. You know, there is something pulling us. The desire of the flesh, it pulls us. It feels good to do that which we want to do. You know, so it pulls us. But if you decide to, uh, to be led by the Spirit, you will produce the fruit of the Spirit. The God's nature will begin to manifest in you when you decide to be led by the Spirit. So Paul exhorts us to walk by the Spirit. And he says we will not, be gratif we will not gratify the desires of the flesh when we follow, we are led by the Spirit. And when we are led by the Spirit, we will produce uh, the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, because it is a total package. It is one. Meaning when you begin to produce, the Spirit, Holy Spirit comes in you, begins to influence you, you produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So it's a total package. The fruit of, of the Holy Spirit, the all nine attributes, begin to manifest out of you, not just some. Because now the Holy Spirit has influenced you, you begin to manifest the total nine attributes of the Spirit. We begin to see them. So this is not about you saying, oh, in a, uh, I am I'm, I'm this. I, I, I don't get angry. This is something that will be seen by people. We will not need to boast. We will not need to tell others. But this will begin to manifest. You know, uh, you know when you are eating well, you don't need to go and begin to tell people at Ndaria well. Aye. You begin to tell people, ah, I didn't eat well. No. Your skin will begin to explain. Just your skin, when they look at your skin, your skin, eh, not to punda ture moneka. Your skin explains that this guy lives well. So you will not boast. This is how it is as believers. You will not boast. It will just begin to see. You will see people, they will notice it. They will notice that you are being influenced by the Holy Spirit. So Paul exhorts us uh, to live by the Spirit. Because when we live by the Spirit, the God's nature will be manifested in us. We will begin to see the fruit of the Spirit begin to manifest in us. 
So you may ask a question, how do we produce the fruit of the Spirit? How does this fruit of the Spirit produce? For some of us, we think we can ourselves begin to produce the fruit of the Spirit. You say, no, I, I, me, I, 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 I'm a good person. I can produce the, good of, the fruit of the Spirit. You cannot because your nature, which pulls you, and that is more like the gravity, it pulls you. Your nature in you is sinful. Your nature in you is sinful. But when the Holy Spirit comes in you, it is the work of the Spirit. When the Spirit comes in you, when you decide to be led by the Spirit, and when the Spirit comes in you, the Spirit gives you power to overcome the flesh, and it begins to work in us. And you know that the Spirit is God. When the, the Spirit begins to, be, to work in us, it, the God's nature, the God's nature, and the, and the, and the, person, the, the attributes of God begin to influence our personality. The attributes of God, God's nature begin to influence our, 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 us as persons, our attributes, the way we are. We were uh, people who are, uh, who, who burst in rage, who be drawn to drunkardness, who when they just see a skate, they, they will follow that skate. But when it, 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 it comes in us, it begins to influence our, our nature. It transforms our nature. And then, we, because it is working inside out, and this begins to be manifested in our personality, in what, how we react to things, in what we do, in places where we are found, you know, it begins to manifest in us. Because the word of God, when it comes, it comes to perform. It comes to transform us. Can I hear an amen? amen. So it comes to, to transform us inside out. You know, when, the way God works, he works from the inside out. But the devil works from the outside in. Right? That's how these people, work, these two work. Because the, the devil works from outside. That's why he took Jesus uh, to begin to see things so that he influenced him from what he sees. So the devil, or the, 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 the sinful nature, works from the outside. We, we see things, you know. We hear things. When your friend tells you, Chadi Dila Mahilo, it's from outside. You want to go and test. When, when, when your friend tells you, I was with this beautiful girl, it is from outside. But the Holy Spirit, when it comes in us, it works in us, deep down us, influence our personality, influence our character, and this now begins to manifest from inside out. And then we begin to bear uh, the God's nature. We begin to, to, to produce the God, God's nature. Amen. Amen. So when, when, when now the, 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 the Spirit, the Holy Spirit transforms us, now we begin to show love. Not love we have, love we have a genuine love. Not love we have conditions. This is, we are talking about agape love. The love that is unconditional. Not where the love of a boyfriend and a girlfriend because they are giving you something. That is, un that is conditional love. They are not just giving you, there is something that they are looking for. Just wait for a few uh, days, or, you will see that that was not a, a, a draining love, but it was a conditional love. But when the Spirit comes in us, transforms us, it begins, we begin to express genuine love, agape love. You desire for somebody to succeed. You desire for something good to happen to somebody. Amen. And then uh, we begin to express joy. We are talking about joy. We are not talking about happiness. 
Because happiness is something that happens to us. When something happens, we become happy. But joy comes from deep down inside us. This joy is influenced by God. It is influenced by God's nature. Because this joy comes from us, uh, you know, uh, even in times when things are difficult, even in times when things are hard, you, you, are still, you still express joy. You still feel this joy. Because this joy is coming out of God's nature. So we, are, we, we begin to express peace where unbelievers... You know, unbelievers are, are very... Peace, eh? You know, even those with a lot of money, but they, are not, they don't have peace. Why? Because they don't know when they die where they are going. Oh? They don't know. They don't know. So they don't have this peace. That's why they don't sleep. They don't have this peace. But because we have hope, hope of salvation, that we have given our lives to Christ, and that we will be saved, we are at peace. Even if I eat umlembwe, even if I eat katapa, even if I eat uh, chimpapira, I'm still at peace. Because I know, by the end of it all, when my father calls me, I'll be with him. So I am at peace. So this is the peace that comes out of uh, the working of the Spirit. So when the, the Spirit works in us, we want to express kindness to others. We, we extend kindness to others. When something bad is happening to our friend, we don't feel good. We want to be of help to that person because of the work of the Spirit that has transformed us to be so kind and extend kindness to others. I pray that you will be kind to your neighbor. You will be kind to your, your brother and your sister. Those that are struggling with grades, you'll be kind to them. If you are doing well, you'll be able to say, my brother, my sister, I think I understand this topic. I'm able to show you this. You express and extend kindness to others. Can I hear an amen? If that one is, needs resuscitation. Can I hear an amen? amen? So we begin also to exhibit faithfulness in all situations. Noting that was shopping something You begin to express faithfulness. You become faithful even in little things. Because you the, the Holy Spirit has influenced your personality, has transformed your personality, has changed you the way they knew you long time ago. For some of those that are, uh, had but when the Holy Spirit transforms you, all that, who were faithful for even to yourself? Now oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't go there. Amen. Amen. So we become gentle to others. We become more considerate to others. Bukomando vula puaku. Kuba yonse ni hadatata. Become gentle. We become considerate. Uh, those that are, are weak, we want to 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 help them. We don't want to uh, to 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 be so forceful on them. But we become considerate, you know. We become considerate and sensitive to others. So even the words that we say to others, they are, we are sensitive. We don't just talk anyhow. We don't even know how this is affecting somebody. You just say it. But when the spirit comes in us, we are sensitive even in the word. The words that we say. So to come back like she was a words in the for way different. And we become self-control. We, we, we show self-control. We begin to show self-control. You know? Restraint. There is a, a restraint. You know? Uh, when, when, when you are with the girls, you, you restrain yourself. Yourself. Because there is that self-control. 
It's not everyone who can become your girlfriend. Amen? Or you cannot be a, boy, a, a girlfriend to all the, boy, the boys. So self-control comes in you. You begin to control yourself because the God's nature has influenced your personality. Let's, let's proceed as we go closer to the winding up. So Paul goes further now, reminding the believers that those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh uh, with its passion and desires. So you crucify those that belong to Jesus. They, you crucify the flesh. So the flesh is we crucify the sinful nature in us, you know. Uh, we have established that the sinful nature always desires us to do evil things, bad things. And in this, it doesn't, they don't look like they are bad, though. You know? Sexual immorality, sometimes it may, you may think it's, it doesn't look... To you, in the sinful nature, it is okay. <laughs> but it is not okay. But if you have crucified... If you, are, you belong to Christ, you crucify the flesh. And I want to tell you that crucifixion is not an easy thing. When our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified for our sake, for our transgression, for our sin, he endured pain. It was not easy. That's why he prayed a prayer that if it, it is your will, take away this cup. Because he understood the pain that he was going to go through. And now we see him enduring the pain. He endured the pain because of what he was seeing. He was seeing salvation for all of us. And he endured that pain. So when the Bible talks about crucifying our flesh, it is not an easy thing. So I came to encourage you when we are telling you to crucify your, your flesh, it is not easy. It is a painful process. It is a painful experience. You know, this is... Uh, you know, leaving the things that we think they are good. When all our friends, they go out to do the parting, and we decide to remain in the dorm. It is painful. Right? Is it easy? No. Can I hear? Is it easy? No. It's not easy. Because you know now where could have later enjoy. But because you know that is sinful nature, because you have crucified the sinful nature in you, you, start, you endure the pain. You endure the pain. You say, I can't go to that place. I can't do this. No, this is not for me as a believer. Amen. So it is painful. It is, it is not easy. You will have to bear the pain of the crucifixion of the sin of nature, of the desires of the flesh. So Paul now ends by aging us not to be self-centered. So man's nature, because the sin of nature is always self-centered. It's, it's self-seeking. But he ends by encouraging us not to be self-centered. When the spirit comes in us, we begin to be considerate of others. It's not all about you. It's not all about you. Look at your neighbor. What is happening with your neighbor? If your neighbor is doing well, encourage them. Praise them that you are doing well. I, 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 would, I would want you to help me also to perform well. I would do it, but you are not envious of this person. If you are doing well, you will not be, begin to boast. Even for one man, I won't say few couple. So you will not be, because that is self-centered, self-seeking. You are just looking at yourself. So when the Spirit comes in us, it comes to do that. So how do we respond to this message? How do we respond to this message? Number one, we must know that, this, uh, that it is the Spirit who enables us to overcome the flesh. It is not by our own power. It is the Spirit of God that enables us to overcome the, the flesh. And all what we need is to yield to the Spirit. Yield to the Spirit. You know, uh, uh, James talks about resisting the, 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 the devil. So, and drawing closer to God. 
draw closer to God and he'll draw closer to you. So yield to the Spirit. Yield to the leading of the Spirit. The Spirit leads us. The Spirit talks. The Spirit tells us. He talks through people. He talks in dreams. He whispers a word. He, he, he'll drop a word in you. Listen to that word. It, it, when you begin to do that, the Spirit will begin to cultivate God's nature in us and will begin to produce God's fruit in us. So you may be asking, how do we do that? How do we do that? Number one, the Bible talks about walking by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. If you walk by the Spirit, uh, you will be able to overcome the desires of the flesh. Number two, you must be led by the Spirit. You will not be under the law because it is the Spirit that is uh, leading you. Then you will not be under the law. And the last one is keep in step. The Bible talks about let us keep in step by the Spirit. So keeping in step by the Spirit, it is walking side by side with the Spirit. Amen. It is not me being in front of the Spirit or I've left the Spirit there. But we are walking together with the Spirit. And the Spirit is guiding us. It is telling us we have not gone before the Spirit. When you go before the Spirit, you will do the desires of the flesh. But when we walk side by side with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit will be able to tell us, don't do that. You cannot be in this place. That is a wrong friend. Drop him. It, he will guide you because he's active. He's not like he's sleeping. He's active. He will guide you. And at the end, people will begin the, the, the God's nature manifest in us. Amen. Thank you very much for being attentive. Uh, God bless you. Amen.